In this example, let's construct a simple NPV model. As you can see above, we're dealing with a problem whereby a firm is considering buying a new $15,000 piece of machinery, assuming that that machinery will help it improve its cash flows by $4,000 per year for the next five years. We're being asked to solve for the project's NPV and IRR. As always, let's stick to a process of how to do some problem solving for this particular NPV approach. So the first thing we're going to do, as always, is read the problem twice. After we've read the problem and we have an understanding of what it looks to be asking for, as always, the second thing we will do is document the assumptions that the problem lays out. So let's go ahead and take some time to put down what we know about this problem. So the first thing that we know is that cash flows will be increased by $4,000 per year. And we know that that will happen for five years. So we're going to go ahead and jot those things down. And we ask ourselves then, what does it require for us to generate that? What is the investment? So our cost, in this case, is the $15,000 purchase price of the equipment. You can see that I missed my alt before hitting my HAN. And then the last thing is, we know that the firm can do something else which is invest and earn 11%. Now that we've got that, we want to go ahead and work with the timeline. Now, since I'm not going to do the drawing for you, what I'm going to go ahead and do is start building a timeline into Excel, which is going to look like this. The timeline itself are the periods, starting with period 0, and then, in this case, extending out until period 5. It's very critical that you have all of these periods included, especially period zero. Now that we've got the periods in there, what we want to do is go ahead and build the model in Excel. And so it will have a standard format. And the standard format you want to think about is that cash flows only do two different things. They can come in or they can go out. Once we have in and out, the next thing is what's called cash flows net. From there, we're going to calculate present values and eventually get an NPV and an IRR. So let's start wiring in some of those formulas. I'm going to put a line here to indicate a subtotal. Because cash flows net is going to sim simply be equal to cash flows in minus cash flows out. Once I've got that, we'll go ahead and copy and paste it because that same formula is going to apply to the whole model. So now let's start pulling in the cash flows. So we know that it will take us a $15,000 cash flow out now in order to generate for the next five periods a $4,000 cash flow in. When I highlight that assumption, I'm going to hit F4 so that the reference is fixed, and that way I can easily copy and paste that reference all the way across. Resize my columns, and now let's move on to the present value piece. This is the piece we've been learning for a week, so we'll use the equals PV formula. And it says, well, what rate do we want to use? Again, the rate won't change, so I'll highlight it and hit F4. That way it will fix that reference. Because of the way we built the model, the number of periods sits right there in the column above me. Clue is there is no payment. So we will hit the comma twice. Then because of the nuance of Excel, we will flip the sign on the future value and then the future value is the cash flows net so when we highlight that it shouldn't surprise us that fifteen thousand dollars out now has a present value of fifteen thousand negative once we've got that we should be able to copy and paste straight across and then notice how the numbers are getting smaller into the future as the further you have to wait 
with an opportunity cost, the less its present value. Last two things are fairly simple, but they're the essence of the problem, which is the NPV is simply the sum of all the present values. Again, I say the NPV is simply the sum of all the present values. So I type in equals sum, and then I highlight the range, and here I see the present value is negative $216.41. I'm going to highlight that since that's one of my answers. And then the last thing the question asks for is, what is its IRR? IRR you can think of as being simply the project's rate of return. So for IRR, the formula is equals IRR, and this time we select the cash flows net. Again, this time we select cash flows net as our IRR formula input. We hit enter. I'm going to change the formatting on this so that we can see it a little bit broader. If I can strike the right keys, we'll make that yellow. And then the last step of our process, now that we have our Excel model built, is to help the firm make a decision. And so in the context of IRR, boy, I'm having trouble typing here. The project should be pursued if, man, I'm terrible today. I don't want to re-record this. If the NPV is greater than or if the IRR is greater than the rate. So in this case, we would not want to pursue the project because it creates a negative NPV. In essence, you spend $15,000, but on a present value basis, you only get $14,783 back right now. Who would want to do that with me? Anybody want to give me 15 grand so I can give you 14783 If so, I'll take that deal, but I suggest that you don't. And secondly, our IRR, what is the project's return? Is only 10.42%, where we could do 11% otherwise. So we would reject this problem.